Hi, I'm Paul, and this is The Golf Show. Okay, so today I'm back at Crossland Hayes with Chris Hansen, and what I want to talk about today is putting, and in particular, all the different putting techniques, the different grips you can use out on the course. Watching the TV, the European Tour, the PGA Tour, they're all using different grips now. There's so many different combinations. When I took up golf, it was just the reverse overlap, a very standard grip. I still use that grip now, but there are so many variations out there. Putting accounts for maybe a third of your shots on the course, so it's really important we're giving ourselves the best opportunity to get the ball in the hole as quick as possible. So let's go and have a chat with Chris and see what techniques are out there, why they, some of these techniques are good, some of the disadvantages as well, and why they might help you. Chris, four out of four. Easy, right? Simple, mate. Easy game. Chris, great to be back here again. Thanks so much for your time. Pleasure, mate. Great to see you. So they say, drive for show, put for dough. Is that true? Um, <laughs> yes and no. I guess, I don't know, new stats now maybe say that you, you have got to drive the ball really well. Yep. You've got to hit it really close. It makes putting a lot easier. Yep. But the argument is, if you can't get in the hole, then you ain't going to win no golf yep. tournaments, are you? So I play off seven, and the stats say I should take 31 putts per round. So, you know, you would say two a hole, but I guess it's a bit less than that. Are they the kind of stats you'd look to measure people on nowadays? Yeah, I, I think we briefly spoke about it. I think it's a very old school yeah. way of looking at stats now, isn't it? Like, I think uh, the amount of times you do that from lessons, they'll come in and say, oh, I had, I had 36 putts again today. It's rubbish, I need to get better. And you, you say to them, well, if you hit 18 greens and you hit it to 50 feet on every hole, 36 it's putts really is good. really, really good. Yeah. So you look at yeah. hole inputs from on tour at eight feet at 50 percent average yeah you've got to get a lot of good goal shots to uh to make it count so so yeah so it's a bit yeah. of an old school stat so i'd love people to come to me and say listen i hold this much yeah footage of putts today um is that a bit more meaningful then yeah absolutely because yeah. it obviously is relevant to have close hit into the hole i keep i always keep a track of my first footage of put yeah and which put i actually hold and how far that put was as well okay. so interesting, inter stuff. interesting yeah. stuff and so putting counts for 35, 40% of most amateurs' games. So does that mean 35, 40% of your lessons are putting lessons? <laughs> One in 100, maybe? One in 100, really, wow. Yeah, so not a lot, not a lot. This is a bit of a no-brainer, really. I can, you can see where we're going here. You, yeah. You know, I, I, people, I guess everyone wants to hit driver and, and have the nice swing, but you've got to be accomplished on all parts of the game. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think everyone wants to hit the ball well. Um, but I always think what's different with putting is like if you hit a seven iron and you hit it within 30 feet of the flag, you've hit a pretty good shot. Yep. If you've hit it to 20 feet or 40, it, it's not too different, is yep. it? But if you miss a putt, you miss a putt and, yep. and the reactions are, and, the, and the feelings are a lot different. So it is a different part of the game, isn't it? And to be honest, it's probably a really easy win for people to get, yep. to get better at putting, especially, especially a higher handicap. We've got five different types of grip we're going to try out today. Chris is going to demonstrate some. He's going to get me to try some that I've never tried before, so that'll be interesting. So let's get straight off and let's start with the traditional reverse overlap grip. Yep, let's go for it. Okay, so Chris, the reverse overlap grip. This is the grip that I was taught with as a kid. I think it's yep. probably still, is it still the most common grip you see out there now? It's probably, it's, I would say it probably is. You know, okay. I think, I think there's a more, it went through a phase of a lot of people going to a, a left below right. Yep. But yeah, I would say, I would say that probably is a high percentage of the way people grip the club in, in some form, in yep. some form here. And, and it sounds very complicated, reverse overlap. <laughs> yeah. So just put your hands on the club and show us exactly what it is. Yeah, so if you look at a normal golfing grip, yep. you overlap or interlock. Yep. So obviously the, it's the right so, pinky so doing the, the work. The bottom hand is going on top. So now it's the, the reverse bottom. overlap, so obviously it's the index finger of the opposite hand, so, so yeah. Okay, can I see what that looks like at the front of the club when you address it? So, very neutral. Very Tiger Woodsy. Yep, this say. was something that Tiger and Jack used, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's see you roll a few of these. Okay. Now, an advantage of this grip is it's going to prevent a lot of wrist hinge, I'd imagine. 
but you're still going to get some. I've used this majority of the time. It feels the most comfortable. But I, I did play around with going left below right to try and limit a little bit. Yep. I was always a bit inside and a little bit closey. Okay. So they say that, that angle is quite easy to, to create, yep. isn't it? Um, so yes, I'm leading on to, to, to the next grip. Is, yep. is your left below right, isn't it? Okay, so for the second grip, Chris is going to show me how to do it. I'm going to go lead arm low, or for me as a right-handed golfer, left below right. So I've never tried this. I've seen Jordan Spieth use it you know, superbly, one of yeah. the best putters in the world, I think. And also Gary Player once said that if he was going to change anything, if he was starting his game now, this would be what he would go to. And I think that's because you're getting the, the shoulders level. Yeah, so for me, it, that's exactly right. I, yeah. I, I did it left below right yeah. to level my shoulders, to help rock yeah. better. Uh, and also, yeah, to prevent that left wrist from breaking down because it feels a lot, uh, a lot firmer. So it's there, going to control yeah. the face. Yeah. Left hand low for me. Yeah. Am I doing any kind of overlap or anything with this hand or just, yeah. or just on top? I, I guess it's a, it's a very personal thing, isn't it? I guess the intention is that it does level your shoulders. Yeah. For me, again, it is a bit... You could say okay, reverse overlap. A reverse below, reverse right? overlap. Yeah, yeah. If you okay. can tongue tie that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would. I would it basically, yeah, it's just left below right because it levels your shoulders. So like left below right, thumb would sit just there, would it? Absolutely. Yeah. If I'm doing the, the reverse overlap, the left shoulders higher. Yeah. So are the shoulders now. Yeah, pretty level. Yeah. You can see the the white stripe on your on your jacket's pretty level. Okay. Um, and yeah, just. Uh, oh, I can't take it back. I think. For me, short puts was the reason I did it. Yep. For face control, yep. I felt I lost a little bit of feel when I went into longer puts. So obviously, your right hand for me is, feels yep. like the feel hand, and it kind of taking I mean, that, taking that so away. So it's just more me. of a rock and a yeah, a, just a, a bit more mechanical. It felt a bit. I think if you are struggling with a bit of face control, it, yep. it probably is something to try. Yep. Maybe before yep. going to pencil grips. So, so an advantage of that is is the face control. Maybe a disadvantage is it does feel very strange if you've done that for a long time. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of getting used to, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, if you've got a 50, 60 foot putt, I think it's mm. quite difficult to, to, to rock enough, yeah. whereas you go normal, not conventional grip. Yeah. You, 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 from that distance, you can allow a little bit of yeah. hinge and flexibility to get that extra bit of speed. Yeah. I mean, so I've seen Phil Mickelson, but obviously he's a, a law in his own right, so on, on longer putts, you might go. You know, obviously he's left-handed, but the equivalent would be right hand at the bottom for longer putts. Yeah. And then shorter putts, he's, he's swapping yeah, over. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've, I've had a go at that. Have you? <laughs> yeah. How did it go? Yeah. Again, it yeah. kind of makes sense. Like yeah. for longer putts, you need that bit of feel, maybe, yeah. and short putts, you need more face control. Um, now we're going to touch on pencil grip, claw grip, and and maybe even maybe reverse claw, which I, I think Tommy Fleetwood still does. So, okay. so pen, pencil grip, left hand grips the club normally and pencil, index finger of the right hand, just kind of goes down the side of the grip and, and it feels very soft. Uh, right hand's not really doing anything, left hand's controlling the, the pace of the, the stroke uh, and it feels like my right hand's just, just kind of guiding the face really. It feels too soft to me, it feels, feels too much could go wrong, it doesn't feel as square as it probably could do. Feels a bit wobbly, and I think in the wind, I'd really, really struggle with this. Will that limit the number of moving parts, though? Is is the less less to go wrong? I guess you, you're getting rid of maybe that right hand being active in the yep. stroke. Uh, it's I don't think there's enough. You've not got enough su support to. Or yeah. It's hard to to do that from there. Whereas here, it's more wrist. So I can I think on really really fast greens in good weather, no wind. I think you could do it. And again, maybe hitting it hard might be difficult. So I'm not a big fan. I can see why people will do it on fast screens though. Okay. Okay, moving on from there, obviously then we've got the, like you say, you've got the claw. So again, left hand stays, stays normal, you could say. Okay, now four fingers go across the top of the grip. Elbow is quite, feels really awkward yeah, to me. It, you, that, that was something I noticed you say, your elbow really sticking out. Yeah, but I think for people, again, with, with big issues of face control, I think it's, it's 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 something you would certainly you you would give it a go, and I think now oh, it feels like it goes all over the place for me. I mean, we're seeing more of that though on tour, aren't we? And I'm seeing more club golfers going to that as well. Yeah, it's it's becoming it's becoming not the norm, but it's acceptable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it does look I, very strange. I heard yeah. that I think if it, like Phil Kenny, one the, the best point teacher in the world, it, it, it is something he would automatically try to see if people put better with. Wow. It's not something now what people are going to to fix something. They're just 
automatically trying it as it might be something they're better at. And, and would that kind of grip suit a particular stroke? Would that be better for a back and through stroke? I think it, not. I think it would help someone maybe if they're trying to get away from being too rotational. Yep. I think too much rotation. Obviously, it, it does feel very rigid and very square again. Um, so yeah, I can see that. I can see the, why people would try it. And again, looking, I'm pretty sure Fleetwood, he might still do it. But he, I think, pretty much goes the the reverse version of that. So wow. In my head, I think this kind of suit sits with me a bit better because it feels like my elbow is pointing at the target. Yeah. And it kind of feels like I'm just driving my elbow. So in that instance, is, is the left hand yeah. actually doing much? Yeah, so now the right hand's back where it, it naturally, it feels more naturally in control. Yeah. And my left hand is just sort of guiding it. So I think for pace, this for me, as a right-handed player, probably feels a bit easier. I think. Interesting. People often refer to golf as their church. Well, this next putting grip is called the prayer. So, Chris, if you can demonstrate this one for us, please. Yes, yeah, so as we discussed, it's a bit, it's a bit Matt Wallace, isn't it? Yep. Um, a really, really good putter. Um, he goes hands. I've tried this as well myself. I've tried everything, Paul. Right? <laughs> well, I haven't had tried with golf. So, yeah, hands, hands together. Again, level shoulders. Yep. Um, and thumbs. If you can get them, maybe you probably would need a fatter grip, yeah. maybe a two thumb grip. Thumbs right. go together, very level. Doesn't feel like I've got much control of, not much control, but much feel on the club. It feels yeah. a bit, God, it feels a bit wobbly again to me. So is that, is that all shoulders then? It, yeah, all shoulders. Again, I think fast greens when you're not particularly stroking it very hard, very fast. I think most of us probably don't play on particularly fast greens. Um, but yeah, you don't want to be hitting the ball there. I think it's a shoulder movement and the ball just gets in the way and it's nice and smooth. Not a specific point coach, but I reckon a high percentage of people have too much face rotation yep. and don't control the face well enough. So all these methods are pretty much around the, the idea of controlling face better, aren't they? And yep. having less rotation. Yep. So yeah, I would say shoulders level more, encourages more rocking of the shoulder. The final technique we're going to look at today, Chris, is the arm lock. So in episode 58 of the Golf Show, just about a month ago, I reviewed Bryson DeChambeau's sick putter, which went up his arm, it does lock against the arm there, and you can put your different grips on it. So we're going to see the benefits of those. You'll see people like Bryson DeChambeau, Phil Mickelson doing it with it up their lead arm. Obviously you need the, the right amount of loft on the club. Yeah. Um, I saw Matt Kuchar doing it where it was going up the, the trail arm the other yeah, day. Interesting, I, yeah. You know, I don't know how, how that really works. So what are the benefits of this, Chris? I know we've not got a, a, a fully longer putter here, but just with cool. that thing with this is it's, it's all face control, isn't yeah. it? And, and Bryson's a huge example of this very straight arm shaft very straight obviously the putter the loft has to be fitted correctly yep. um, obviously it's very forward in in shaft lean so the loft needs to be to be added to the putter um, but yeah I, I guess it's the whole idea that there's there's, there's just less moving parts isn't yep. there you know Bernard Langer's um, a big a big example of this as well um, for me I don't I don't like it I don't like how it feels, but I don't like the ethos of it as well. I think it's kind of against, yep. against the whole idea of, of, of a putter being, you know, I mean, just the, just the way the yeah. putter works yeah. and the skill of controlling the face. It kind of feels like, I don't know. And, and don't Bryson know. looks super rigid with it as well. I don't like the yeah. posture personally. I mean, I guess you're going to get an incredibly stable stroke, yeah. but you're going to sacrifice some feel there. Yeah, I can see it being, uh, it can be maybe getting kicked out of the game, I think, yeah. but. Yeah, so kind of everything's locked in place. Again, fast greens. As you put in round round Augusta, you're not having to move your body or, or or the putter as fast. It's really a lot easier to keep still. But as soon as you, as soon as you've got some speed into it on the slow greens, I think it's, it's again it's probably going to be quite difficult for most yes, people. Chris, thanks so much. That was really helpful. Um, there's so many different grips out there and so many different variations on the grip as well. Yeah. It, it is a personal thing, isn't it? Yep. I think you've got to you've got to do what's right for you, and, yep. and there's no harm in trying all these things. Um, at the end of the day, if you can get in the hole and it works, then that's what. Thanks you're so doing. much for your time. Really appreciate it as always. Yep, great again, mate. Guys, that's all for this week. We'll see you next week on the Golf Show. I hope you enjoyed the episode of the Golf Show. To watch another, click here. To subscribe, click here.